Right now in Double Oak, we do have a tornado worn storm. A tornado could be developing. One right now is certainly a aloft. We have a funnel cloud, most likely, certainly a rotating wall cloud right now. Jason, let's put a storm track on that. Let me go check a couple of things out here if we can. The circulation is is right over Double Oak right now. Uh, we are getting reports of very, very large hail in the area at this moment. Uh, and just hang with me here for just a second. Uh, is meteorologist Jesse Hawila in the other weather center? Yes, he is. If we go to Jesse for just a moment, that'll allow me to change some equipment out here for just a moment. But we do have a tornado worn storm right now. Sirens are going off in Denton County at this moment. And I want everyone to please seek shelter immediately. If you live in Double Oak, if you live in Corinth, if you live in Hickory Creek, I mean, even if you're in Louisville, we've seen some of these storms tonight take a right hand turn. But if you live anywhere in these areas, go to your safe room as quickly as possible. Head to the safe room as quickly as you can. That would be the lowest floor of your home. It will arrive in uh, Double Oak. It's there now. Uh, Copper Canyon at 944. Hickory Creek at 950. Corinth at 952. Shady Shores at 955. Oak Point at 959. Lincoln Park at 1004. And Krugerville at 1009. So that's the latest with this thunderstorm that most likely is producing a tornado at this point. I'm not getting, I don't have any reports right now of anything on the ground, but you can clearly see what we have happening here. Let's, let's loop this through again for me, Jason, if you uh, don't mind, loop it through. You can see a very well-defined hook echo with this system right now, just to the west of Double, uh, just to the west of Louisville, on top of Double Oak. Let's do this, let's zoom in. I want to get down to the street level mapping, and if you live in any of these locations, I'm going to I'm going to call out some streets. Well, we're going to be looking at some neighborhoods. So if you live around Kings Road, if you live around Idlewood Boulevard, Waketon Road, here's Justin Road. So we're in, in the Bartonville area as well. So it's Double Oak, it's Bartonville. Uh, this comes right off of uh, this is Morris Road, Highland Village. Double Oak, Copper Canyon, move down just a little bit more, Highland Shores Boulevard. So if you live in any of these locations, so we're on the west side of 35E, please seek shelter immediately. As I mentioned just a moment ago, it's an interior room. It is away from the, the windows. It's away from any exterior wall. It's probably just a closet, uh, an interior closet, away from any, any windows, away from any of your exterior walls. A, a bathroom would be a great place right now. Maybe it's just that interior room washroom, the little, the little bathroom. Go in there because those extra walls and that extra plumbing will provide protection. I'm very concerned about this storm right now. Jason, let's put a, a, a rotation uh, a symbol on there if we can. So if you live around Justin Road, uh, Morris Road, uh, Long Prairie Road, Valley Ridge Road, there's our rotation at Double Oak. Here's Copper Canyon, Lantana Trail, uh, Cross Timbers, any of these locations right now in Double Oak, in Highland Village, uh, in Bartonville, any of these locations. If you live there, please go to the lowest floor of your home right now. We are not getting reports. The sirens are going off all over in Denton County. A very, very nasty hook on that uh, thunderstorm right now that has rotation aloft at this point. Meteorologist Jesse Hawila is with us. Jesse, give me an update while I change out some equipment here very quickly, please. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So again, this is a very serious storm. Uh, when you see a hook echo like this, uh, it means business. And we look at rotation here on radar. And Jason, if we could zoom out just a little bit, so, so when we see these, you know, when we see these reds and greens very close together like this, this is what we call a couplet and this is where we have rotation and that's why this tornado warning is issued. So our main area of focus in terms of where there could be a tornado and it's, I hate to say this, it's looking a little more likely uh, based on this radar signature. Uh, that's going to be around Double Oak up to Highland Village and, and, and Jason, if we could scroll to the northeast a little bit. Um, this will soon be crossing 35E near Lake Dallas. So if you know anybody in this area, you know, hopefully they're, they're getting off the roads. It, it, tell them, you know, if you know someone that let's say is driving between Louisville uh, up to Denton, 
I'd like you to at least tell them to make sure they're in a safe place. This will then cross 35 in toward Little Elm. And if Jace, we could go a little bit farther northeast in this tornado warning. Uh, toward Little Elm, and that's going to be West Frisco. Uh, you know, full transparency, full transparency. Uh, I live in this area, and I'm very uncomfortable here. So, you know, my wife and, and my daughter are in this area, and I'd like to, I know that they're already in shelter. So, uh, just letting you know, I'm telling my family to get into a safe place. They're in the closet, they're in a safe place. You need to do the same if you're in this tornado warning, Pete. Yep, Jesse, I'm glad you're coming back to me right now. Uh, go do your thing. I want you to call your wife take care of your wife and your new daughter. We'll take care of things here for, for the time being, but Highland Village, and take that advice that Jesse just gave you. That is the safest, it's the smartest advice. Go to that safe room, go to the lowest floor of your house. If, if you live in an apartment on a second story, get to know your neighbors down on the first floor because this is a serious situation. We've already seen some baseball size hail tonight with these thunderstorms and now, a very, very uh, well-defined signature here with this rotation. I mentioned Bartonville and Highland Village heading off toward Little Elm. The sirens are going off all over in Denton County right now. So please, please uh, don't take this too lightly. Don't think that this is just, well, this is just a, a March thunderstorm. It is, but it's one that's probably producing a tornado right now. Very likely. So we're in the Louisville, Highland Village, Corinth, Bartonville, Argyle area. Little Elm, this is to the west of Frisco right now. This thunderstorm is moving off to the northeast and we'll put a track on there, but this thunderstorm is moving off to the northeast at about 30 to 35 miles per hour. And as it moves in that direction, you're looking at the, uh, here we go, watch this. Boom, there we are, Highland Village. It's there right now, it's 947, so any moment, Lake Dallas, 956, Shady Shores, 10 o'clock, Little Elm, 1005, Lincoln Park, 1009, uh, Parvin at 1018, and Prosper at 1021. Let's take this off and let's put back on the reflectivity. The signature is, is not as well defined as it was even five or 10 minutes ago. We still have the tornado warning in effect until 1030 right now, but we're still seeing just enough of a couplet here, just enough of a rotation just to the west of Louisville in Bartonville in Highland Village. That's the area that we're concerned about right now. So it's still defined enough that I want you to take shelter as quickly as you can. I'm looking at some of our tower cams here off to my uh, off to my right, and I don't see in the Denton tower cam anything that looks that ominous right now. I see just a few lightning strikes, but all the activity is to the south. Our, our tower cam is in this area here at UNT, and we're looking off to the south, southeast in this location. So once again, if you live in uh, Denton County, especially Flower Mound, Bartonville, please take shelter immediately. Uh, the tornado potential is in place right now. The structure with this storm is very impressive. It's, it's still well-defined, but I want you to take shelter immediately in Corinth and Bartonville, uh, in Highland Village, in Little Elm, in Lincoln Park. I mean, anywhere from uh, Lincoln Park at 380, all the way down to the south, down just on the west side of uh, 35E. Those are the locations. Let's put that back on, Jason. I want to look at the wind speeds, the winds flowing into the radar, the wind going out of the radar. So as we look at this velocity right now, it, let's we'll put the uh, put the icon on there that shows the rotation as we we look at these couplets. This is the area of concern, and once we put that on there. Now let's do this. Let's zoom in and let me give you some more streets. If you live in any of these locations, if you live on these streets, I want you to go to your safe room. I want you to go to the lowest floor of your home. Stay away from the windows. Go to an interior room. College Parkway, Justin Road. If you live around Highland Shores Boulevard, again, we're in Highland Village. This is a very well-developed area right now. The highway or the road runs just off to the uh, off to the west here, right off of 35W. So Justin Road, Copper Canyon Road, Copper Canyon itself. So when you leave 35E uh, and you drive west, you go through Highland Village, then you end up around Copper Canyon or Double Oak, depending on what road you're on. If you're on Stonehill Farms Parkway or Justin Road, you'll run into Double Oak a little farther to the north. You're up in Highland Village and Copper Canyon. So please stay alert in these areas, and I want you to head to that safe room. The circulation with this is, unfortunately, it is still uh, very impressive as we look at this, uh, this thunderstorm right now. Uh, 
fairly decent supercell thunderstorm that has produced some very large hail. Baseball, golf ball to baseball size hail has been fairly widespread in western Tarrant County and southern Denton County. And then all of a sudden we had this storm really ramp up and the circulation developed pretty quickly and a hook echo developed very, very fast just in the last couple of minutes. And as that took place, it's becoming a little more dirty right now, a little, little less organized, a little less impressive on Doppler radar, but still just enough of a hook right there as we take a look at the basic reflectivity. This is just kind of the, the base radar, if you will. That circulation right there, not as well defined, but still a decent enough hook that we could certainly be seeing a tornado developing. So I feel very confident that we have a wall cloud with this, most likely a rotating wall cloud, most likely a funnel cloud. Haven't seen any reports of that yet. We always look for the power flashes at night because sometimes that will illuminate the sky. Maybe the lightning illuminates the sky, and then that gives us a good visual on just exactly what's taking place. But I have not heard any reports of power flashes, which could be power outages due to the winds with this storm that would illuminate things that hasn't happened yet, but certainly at a minimum rotation aloft with this storm. So once again, the double oak area, we're looking at the Louisville area. Uh, we're seeing right now that, that a new tornado watch has been issued. We will continue and that's until four o'clock in the morning. So at this point, sirens are sounding in Denton County. The circulation with this system right now is strongest in the Highland Village area, Copper Canyon area up to Lake Dallas. We'll put our circulation symbol on there for you just to kind of, there we are. That's it right there. There's our tornado worn storm. It's right on top of you in Highland Village. So you have rotation aloft at this point. And I know we have crews out uh, this evening that are uh, out across the Dallas Fort Worth area and I have my uh, earpiece in so any of the producers can talk to me and let me know where they are right now but uh, we're right along highway uh, third this is 35 e so this is south of the split the split of course is uh, is is farther off uh, split is farther off to the north right now um, 35E and 35W, Highland Village, Copper Canyon, Lake Dallas. If you live in any of these areas, you need to go to your uh, safe room as quickly as possible. This is south of you in Little Elm. It's south of you in Corinth. And if you live in those areas too, I want you to stay alert as we put our reflectivity back on here right now. We're looking at velocity. That shows the wind going into the, into the radar and the wind going away from the radar. Uh, still see just enough of a circulation right now here in the Highland Village area, the Lake Dallas area, south of Corinth, south of Little Elm, these locations were concerned. So we'll put a storm track. This is just on the, really on the west side of Lake Louisville. We'll put a storm track back on there in just a moment, and that will show you the time that it will arrive in your town. So Hickory Creek, it's almost there right now, but it will arrive in uh, Lake Dallas at 9.55. So any moment, Lakewood Village, uh, 10.01, Little Elm at 10.05, Navo, uh, it'll arrive there at 10.10. That's the latest on this storm. Cynthia and Chris, I know you guys are here as well. Uh, I know you're checking in with some of the police departments, the emergency responders. Are yep. you guys getting any reports for them with, uh, with any damage? Not nothing, right now. Nothing right now. We're seeing several tweets from residents who are talking about hearing the sirens go off and, and like that. And I'm just, I had a question, Pete, as someone who's, you know, still relatively new. When you talk about the hook echo for folks who are newer to Texas, not as familiar with tor how tornadoes form and winds, wh what does that mean specifically for those folks living there? When you see a hook echo, it's not as well defined as it was just a moment ago. That's one of those signatures. So as a meteorologist, and when we analyze the radar, we look at a signature, something that would show that boom, X marks the spot. That's where a tornado would be. So when we see a hook echo, that's a signal or a strong sign to us that that's exactly where a tornado is because the hook echo is just showing the circulation. So remember, tornado rotates, right? Counterclockwise, as it rotates on, on the uh, radar, when it shows that reflectivity like Jason is drawing here, that's where we'll have a hook start to develop. So we get that hook and right there, almost near the base of that hook, Right in this area here is where we'll have the tornado. I, I haven't seen a debris ball. A debris ball would be down at the very tip of that. And the debris ball would show the, the radar is actually picking up debris from the storm, homes, uh, whatever that may be. It might be dirt. 
uh, trees, it'll pick that up and that too will show on the radar. So the hook echo is a signature or a telltale sign of most likely a tornado. It doesn't happen all the time. That might be a loft, it might be a funnel cloud, but as soon as it touches the ground, at that moment, technically, that's when it becomes a tornado. So that's, Chris, that's what a hook echo is. It's just a signature or a telltale sign of a tornado. Nine out of 10 times, it means we have a tornado on the ground, a funnel cloud that's touched down, it's on the ground. That's what we're looking at right now in the Louisville, Highland Village, Lake Dallas, Double Oak, uh, Argyle area. Barton Creek area. That's what we're looking at at this moment. So until 1030 tonight, and we'll put a track on there one more time until 1030 tonight, uh, we have this uh, tornado warning that's in effect. And right now, sirens have gone off in the colony. We have very, very heavy rain right now. It's a supercell thunderstorm oh, just on the west side of Lake Louisville, just southeast of Corinth. It's a dangerous storm uh, that's just kind of in the northern sections of the Dallas Fort Worth area. Uh, and we do have, you know, we showed this earlier tonight on the, uh, on the forecast radar that we show. We showed several supercell thunderstorms developing, and that's exactly, unfortunately, what has happened now at just about 10 o'clock, 956, almost 957. Once again, sirens going off all across uh, uh, Denton County. This is the Collin County line right here. This is going to be a close call here in kind of that northwestern section of Collin County, north of Frisco, Salina, Prosper area. Could this storm move in your direction? There's Prosper, we put it up on the map. It'll be, and there's Salina, of course, just, just to the north. Could, could that, uh, this storm move there? Absolutely. Aubrey, Salina, Prosper, I mean, you're not, you don't have any worries at this moment, but at this moment, that's when you need to find your safe room. That's when you need to find that safe spot, gather your family and keep an eye on this because if you can't watch us on, on television here in a few minutes, if you have a power outage, you can always, we have the WFA app. It's, it's our free app and you can stream our newscasts on that. I would suggest getting that. You should have that. Uh, so once again, you can watch our live coverage as it moves along. Certainly a, a, a good tool to have during severe weather season or really any time of year in North Texas. Right now, there's the track. Little Elm, arrival time at 10.06, uh, Parvin at 10.19, Salina at 10.30, Lakewood Village arrival time at 10.03. Right now it's 9.58 and this tornado warning is in effect until 10.30 tonight. And, and I keep stepping off camera here to look on Twitter to see if I'm seeing any pictures of any damage. I'm checking a couple of other our storm watchers to see if we're seeing any, any damage here. And I'm not seeing at this point, um, at this point, point right now we have sirens that are going off right now in flower mound uh, we have sirens going off in Louisville we have sirens going off in the colony uh, I and, and in Little Elm also I am not seeing any reports of any debris I'm not seeing reports of any damage I'm not seeing any reports of, of any problems other than I think everyone's on high alert right now, and we all certainly should be because we have a tornado warning. And uh, it is the, it's, it's here in North Texas and it's a supercell thunderstorm and a tornado warning is in effect. We do have video, you say? Okay, let's take a look at this video right here. This is in Keller. Uh, Eric Alonzo uh, sent this to us just a short time ago. So this, uh, this, this hail that you're seeing with this storm, a quarter, maybe half dollar size, this is the same storm system that has uh, the same supercell storm system that we're tracking right now with the tornado warning. So at this point, I, I haven't had any reports of any damage. At this point, it's a radar indicated uh, possible tornado, but, but you know, all the years that I've been doing this, the hook echo that I just saw 15 or 20 minutes ago, it was as strong of an indicator of a tornado as I've ever seen. It's the kind of thing you open up the textbook and boom, there it is. There's a hook echo. The next thing you know, you have a tornado on the ground. So um, I, I'm very, very happy that we have, I'm extremely happy that there are no reports of any damage right now in any of these areas. Really, it's if you divide uh, Denton County into quadrants, four quadrants. We're looking at the southeast corner of, uh, of Denton County. Now, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised 
I wouldn't be surprised if this tornado warning is extended into Collin County. So right now it is 10 o'clock. We're going to do a quick reset and let you know just exactly what's happening. So good evening again, everyone. I know that many of you have been with us throughout the evening, certainly through the last 25 minutes since a tornado warning has been issued for Denton County. But I do want to bring you an update and we will have the evening's news as the night moves along as well. I'm Chief Meteorologist Pete Delkus. What we're watching right now is a tornado watch is in effect for a large chunk of North Texas right now. That will go into the overnight hours. The tornado watch will and right now we all also have a tornado warning that's in effect. It's in effect for the Metroplex. It's Denton County specifically, and it may very likely move into this northern and northwestern corner of Collin County as we head through the next, uh, I'd say the next five, maybe the next 10 minutes. There are no reports, thankfully, no reports of any damage, certainly no reports of any injuries at this moment. This tornado warning was issued about 10, uh, maybe 20, 25 minutes ago, uh, but we have no reports of any damage, no reports of any injuries, and we're all very, very thankful for that. But we are watching a very well-defined supercell thunderstorm. It's produced golf ball size hail. It has produced baseball size hail. Some of the pictures, I didn't have a, a very good comparison, but some of the pictures look like some of the hail could have been slightly larger than even baseballs. But nonetheless, golf ball to baseball size hail has been reported in the Dallas Fort Worth area tonight. Uh, the west side of uh, Fort Worth, Tarrant County, Denton County. It's a supercell thunderstorm. They're notorious for large hail and this storm too. They're also notorious for spawning tornadoes. This one has a very well signature, very well defined signature about 20 minutes or so ago. Right now we still have a, a strong thunderstorm that very well may spin up again and could spawn a tornado. That's why that tornado warning is still in effect for Denton County until 1030. Jason, uh, Jason Joseph's our weather producer. Jason, will you do this for me? Let's go to the velocity. I want to, it's a little different radar product and what it does is and we could put the circulation on there. What it does is it shows the wind that's going in toward the radar and the wind that's going away from the radar right where they intersect is right where we have circulation. So that's what we're seeing right here. So we have our circulation just on the it would be just east of Lake Dallas, just east of uh, Highland Village and just south of Little Elm, right where Jason is drawing the rotation is right where we have a strong. So Doppler radar does a number of things, but the one thing it, it does great is it looks at the winds within the thunderstorm and it looks at the winds inside the thunderstorm. And if it can detect rotation within those winds, rotation aloft, that's what we see right here. It depicts it in a way of these different colors, the wind going to and away from the radar and where we see the, the kind of the, the, the where they merge, if you will. That's where we have our rotation and that is where we have the possible tornado. Lake Dallas, Highland Village, Little Elm, Oak Point, Corinth. It's it's east of you in Corinth and that's why we have the tornado warning in effect until 1030. We can uh, Jason, we can track this from uh, this velocity data off to the north, uh, north, northeast, 25, maybe up to 35 miles per hour as it moves in that direction. And I'm going to do a hail track here next, but as it moves in that direction, these are the location. These are the times sirens going off all over in Denton County. And I, I would believe here momentarily in the western sides of uh, Collin County, kind of that northwestern corner of Collin County, maybe Frisco, more likely uh, in uh, uh, Prosper in Salina. Storm will arrive in Little Elm at 10 11. It'll arrive in Lakewood Village at 10 08 and at Navo, which is right on uh, Highway 380. I can't tell you how many times I've driven on Highway 380. I don't know that I've ever seen Navo. Some of you at home may be saying the same thing. Hundreds of times uh, west and eastbound on 380. I've never seen Navo, but nonetheless, I know right where Lakewood Village is, Little Elm, Highland Village, the colony in Corinth. Uh, these are areas that we're watching right now. So let's put the hail. Uh, data on there, Jason. I'd like to show everyone at home because we've had golf ball to baseball size hail in these locations too. the hail and we'll analyze it here in just a moment. The hail isn't as as strong or as large the, the signature that we're looking at. It's it's not as large as it once was about 30 to 45 minutes ago when we were getting numerous reports of golf ball and baseball size hail, but we're still showing some hail that's a quarter, maybe some half dollar size stuff. That's what we're seeing right now. I know we have a little bit of video and Jason, as we go to this video, I'll have you put up a couple pictures for me in uh, weather 49. Let's roll that video that we have. 
and the video that we're showing right now, uh, this is uh, a tweet that was sent in. And uh, do we have audio on this? No audio. So uh, this person is concerned and it is chilling when you have a tornado warning and you look outside and you see the skies a, a bit ominous. You see the lightning, then you see the, the wind starting to blow the trees. So very concerning indeed. And that's that is a good thing. It's it's certainly I always want everyone to be on high alert when we have a tornado warning. That's why I've asked you multiple times over the last 40 minutes or so to go to your safe room, to go to the lowest floor in your home. When you're in under a tornado warning anywhere in the country, but especially in Texas, please don't take these things lightly at all. Let's go back to the weather, weather system. Look at this, there's a quarter. <clears throat> We're probably looking at, oh, I don't know, that's gotta be almost golf ball size hail. That was uh, sent in just a short time ago. Yes, and he did say Coach uh, Fears sent this one in. Let's go to the next uh, picture that we have, Jason. If if you will, please, if we have a couple of others. This was, this again, this is the same supercell thunderstorm. This was in the Hazlitt, golf ball to tennis ball size hail in Hazlitt, at LGH Boggs tweeted us that one. I know we have a couple of other pictures as well that we have here. This is at North Fort Worth and I-35 and uh, Heritage Trace. Casey Herring uh, tweeted me that one, and you can see the, the large hail there. And Jason, I think you, if you have a couple of others, you can uh, put those put those up as uh, up as well. Um, Alex uh, is our producer this evening. Alex, I'm, I apologize. What did you say? OK, we can go to tag board. You can you can put those up. You guys roll through some of those as I continue to <clears throat> as I continue to look at possible damage. I'm not seeing any. And that makes me and I know it makes you very happy. Uh, Jennifer Dunn, she's a meteorologist at the National Weather Service. So she tweeted that out just a few moments ago. My thanks to Jennifer. Uh, yep, some very, very large hail right there. This was this is in Emory. That's out in East Texas. Uh, so East Texas has had some hail. Uh, this one came in in Fort Worth and you can see, you know, if the hail wasn't large and the hail wasn't damaging, uh, it was just I mean, the ground was just covered. It looked like at times that the ground was just covered with snow. Uh, Michael Cruz tweeted us this one. This was in Hazlitt. Look at the hail just pouring off there. Jeff Priest sent me this one a, a, a few hours back. That was a west of Canton. That's in East Texas, 10 miles west of Canton. This is in Hazlitt, Tarrant County. <coughs> you can see all the hail there. This is Northwest Fort Worth. So it's either been the golf ball, the, the, the tennis ball, baseball size hail. Look at that. That's that's maybe golf ball size hail, maybe bigger. That's in Gulfweight. That's southwest of, uh, of Fort Worth. But I'm showing you this because this is the intensity and that's what else we're seeing. If you're not getting the really big hail, then you're just getting inundated with like, looks like it's snowing out there with so much hail. That was some small stuff in Forney that Kathy Price tweeted us earlier. And there's Jeff again, that is, uh, that is, um, that is off to the, uh, that, that's west of Canton, about 10 miles. Okay, so here's the, here's the story. Let's go back to the radar because this tornado warning is going to be canceled here in just a moment. And it's going to be canceled because the circulation is just broadening. The storm has just weakened. It's not producing, uh, it, it, it won't produce a tornado at this moment. So the center of circulation with this, although we're still seeing a little bit of a couplet here, a little bit of an indentation, if you will, it's, it's starting to really just the circulation is broadening. It's just really starting to fall apart. It's just weakening right now. So that means for you and Prosper, you could still have a severe thunderstorm. You could still have severe thunderstorm or winds of 58 miles an hour or stronger. You could certainly have that in Prosper. In Frisco, you could certainly have some downburst winds as this thunderstorm, it could possibly collapse. So uh, that although the tornado threat has ended right now, and there it is, the tornado warning has now been canceled. It is no longer in effect for Denton County. I, I do want you to know, I don't want you to take any of these thunderstorms lightly tonight. Uh, I, I mentioned in a call with our newsroom this afternoon that my concern on Monday on a scale of one to five, my concern on Monday was a half, maybe a one, five being the worst. My concern today is a two or a three. So please don't take this. This isn't a big tornado outbreak night, but we only need one. We only need one to cause major problems. We've already had one supercell thunderstorm. We could have another one or two tonight. Now, at a minimum, 
I, I feel very confident, unfortunately, I wish I didn't, but I feel confident in saying that quarter to half dollar to ping pong ball size hails in our forecast for the next couple of hours and the chance of tornadoes. So once again, uh, Jason, do we have that tornado watch map? I know they had issued a new one and uh, I know they had issued a new one. Let me walk over here and see that again, the Denton County tornado warning has been canceled. Uh, the severe thunderstorm warning is going to stay in place. That's what you're seeing that will stay in place just because of the large hail threat. And there it is. I don't know how I would do it without this guy, Jason Joseph. He's a lifesaver, our weather producer. And there we are. Tornado warning. That is not until 10. I, I think it goes to like three or four in the morning. We'll check on that in just a second. The point to this is, though, we have a tornado watch that's in effect. That's almost the entire metro metroplex. It's I would say it's three quarters of the WFA a viewing area. It's it's not the Red River counties, but it's certainly Sulphur Springs to Greenville uh, to McKinney, uh, Tarrant, Dallas, and then Kaufman on over to Van Zant County and then everywhere to the south. You're under that tornado watch and I believe it goes till about three o'clock at this three o'clock in the morning. It was issued I think around 945 or maybe 950 when I was on giving you guys an update on everything, but that's that's the latest. That's what we have right now. Let me go check and see if I can see the time. There it is. Jason, once again, a lifesaver. That is it. It's in place until three o'clock in the morning. The, the tornado has diminished substantially across eastern Denton County. The large hail remains the threat. We still have reports in Little Elm of an inch and a half hail. The broad rotation exists, but this storm has weakened considerably. That's why the Denton County uh, tornado warning has been canceled but the severe thunderstorm warning that does remain. Jason, can we go back to that one more time? And Cynthia and Chris, I'll come to you guys here in just a moment for maybe an update from local police and emergency responders. Let's go back to the radar. There's the, the severe thunderstorm warning. That's in effect for golf ball size hail. So golf ball size hail, let's put a storm track on that and then we'll do a hail analysis right after that. Denton County. Not not Colin, but just Denton. There it is. Little Elm, the colony. Large hail thunderstorm warning. We're going to put the track on it. Northeast 25, 30 miles an hour. That puts it in uh, Colin at 1027 Frisco 1027. They may extend this into into the western sections of Colin Prosper 1030 Salina 1037 Weston 1058. That is the latest with that storm that's moving off to the northeast. So Salina, Prosper, probably the north side of Frisco up to 380 north south of that. Please be on the lookout for some hail. We've dealt with too much hail here over the years. Some of that hail has just been ridiculously large. We've already seen the golf ball, the baseball size stuff tonight. And there we are in Little Elm. Can we uh, do a little analysis, put our analysis tool on there, Jason? And you can do a quick little analysis down here. This is the track of it. That's where this core of the storm started and then it moved right off. So, you know, there's inch and a half, slightly uh, lower up here. So what took place was, it started the supercell started to produce lower, smaller hail sizes, but that's when the tornado spun up. That's not unusual at all for a supercell thunderstorm to do that. They kind of transition from one big problem to the next. They have these monster, monster hail, and then all of a sudden the next thing you know, they, they spawn a tornado. Our William Joy is on the phone in Tarrant County. William, give me an update. First of all, tell me where you are and then let me know what you've seen, please. Yeah, Pete, we are just north of 820 on I-35W, so we're headed north uh, trying to kind of catch the tail of this, but staying just outside it. And we're just south of 287 where that splits off going northwest. Uh, so that gets you an idea of where we are. So as we were headed north just a few minutes ago, we had a really strong band that came through and lasted, gosh, it was only maybe five minutes, but it was really heavy for a little bit. We actually pulled off for a half second. Then there was nothing and then another band kind of game through for a second, and now we're getting this another wave of nothing at the moment. If it, if it was one of those bands, you could probably barely hear me over the range. So that's how strong we're talking about, especially as we were driving. So our plan is to kind of you know, head up north and then follow behind this. I will tell you that earlier when we were staged in, in downtown Fort Worth, there really, I mean, we had some rain, there was some lightning you could see, but nothing strong like what you're talking about. So there are a lot of people who may be watching and saying, well, I mean, I see some rain, maybe I hear some thunder out in the distance, but I haven't gotten half of what, you know, what you were talking about 
And I think, you know, as we started to head north, you can really tell a difference in just kind of what we're seeing out here. William, I appreciate that update. And uh, Cynthia, I know you and Chris have been keeping an eye on things and talking yeah. to emergency managers. Give me an update on that, please. Uh, Chief, just, just got off the phone with Chief Frank Dixon from the Denton Police Department. He says as of right now, so far, they do not have any reports of damage or injuries tonight, but he wanted me to pass along this message uh, to his residents. Although we have not had reports of any damage in our city, please stay home and off the roads if possible and monitor the weather overnight. And I just, uh, Chris, got off the phone with Encore. Uh, they are saying that right now they have fewer than 2,000 outages, about 1,700 power outages right now, mostly concentrated in the North Fort Worth area and in the Grand Prairie area. Follow them on social media if you have to report any of these outages. They have all the information you need right there. Yeah, it looks like it's all pretty much right there, concentrated, uh, the outages right there in that northern part of Tarrant County, north northern part of Fort Worth. And honestly, for the for the activity that we've seen so far, that, that's a fairly low number it of power really outages. Is. Yeah, but Frank Dixon uh, with Denton PD says that he is, he is so grateful that uh, they haven't had any reports of damage or injury tonight Pete that is um yeah thankfully yeah I, I cannot tell you how I, I, I hate severe weather mm -hmm. a lot of meteorologists love it you know just for the sheer you know to watch mother nature but things get broken and people right. get hurt and the fact that we've had baseball size hail tonight I mean a big chunk of Tarrant County has had it southern Denton County has had it the fact that that's happened and we haven't had any damage and thankfully mm -hmm. no one's been hurt I mean, after the last year plus yeah. that we've all had and the crummy weather with right. with with the uh, with the cold and that week when we were all without power and then the water issues and all that. I mean, it's like when's it going to end? And, and with so many homes not even getting started on repairing the damage right. that they suffered five weeks ago yeah. during the yeah. winter storm. So. Yeah, and, and yeah. so the tornado warning has been canceled because that thunderstorm has weakened. Mm -hmm. But we still we have a tornado watch in effect for the Metroplex and everybody to the south until three o'clock in the morning. Okay. So we obviously have the tornado concern. We also have the heavy rain, the lightning, and the hail concern. As Overnight. Well. Overnight, yeah, yeah. Okay. That, that watch goes until three o'clock in the morning. So let me kind of walk you through all of that. There's the, well, it's until four o'clock in the morning, I should say. Uh, and it's interesting that it doesn't include Denton County. Uh, I'm not quite sure why it doesn't include Denton County, but it doesn't. But if you're in Denton County, I want you to be alert tonight. Uh, Maybe a technicality here, but nonetheless, Denton County's not in it. Uh, I think it should be, but I don't run the world. When I do, we'll put it in there. Collin County, there's Hunt County. Then we get on over to Sulphur Springs, to Terrell, to Fort Worth, to Dallas, to Canton, Athens. All of these areas under a tornado watch until 4 o'clock in the morning. So, with that said, let me now show you just exactly what's taking place on the radar. This is a hail maker at this point. This is the supercell that's weakened considerably. The rotation aloft uh, that we saw, and even some of the rotation that was close to the surface, we did not have any reports. Uh, what's that? Yeah, the, absolutely. The, the tornado warning is over. The severe thunderstorm warning is still in effect. The tornado warning is over. At this point, it was canceled because the rotation has gone away. The large hail threat still exists. It still exists, and that's why we have the thunderstorm warning until 1030. Now let's do this. Let me show you the Dallas Fort Worth area. We'll take a look at the DFW map because we have this one thunderstorm in Denton County and also in Collin County. Not much else happening. Now down, let's go down to Ferris County. So southern Dallas County, we have a severe thunderstorm warning in effect. It's Waxahachie. Uh, that's in place. So Ellis County severe thunderstorm warning until 1045. That'll move up into Kaufman County. It may clip the southern portion of Dallas County. Maybe it hits Seagaville with some quarter to half dollar size hail. Stay alert in Kaufman and in Terrell. That's a thunderstorm there. A wider look. Go to the DMA map for me if you will, Jason, because if you're wondering, will we just have these two thunderstorms? What's going to happen overnight? Why do we have a tornado watch in effect until four o'clock in the morning? You see this around Breckenridge, not severe. You see this developing down around Brownwood. I expect this area to expand to our southwest, and that should move in during the overnight. And if we have this model that we were looking at when we were talking with uh, William Joy a few moments ago and Cynthia and Chris, uh, we chose one of the models that we think has a decent handle on things, and that will show us the thunderstorms that will move in as we head through the overnight. 
There it is at midnight. Let's kind of walk through it step by step. And as we kind of walk through that, that will show the thunderstorm starting to develop as we head through the overnight. Now, that's why we have that severe thunderstorm or that tornado watch in effect until four o'clock in the morning. So I expect more thunderstorms to develop. I think the, the activity will become more widespread closer to daybreak. Five, six, seven o'clock in the morning, we'll have thunderstorms around, and some of those thunderstorms will turn severe. The threat of supercells overnight isn't as high as it has been this evening, but certainly we could see some thunderstorms as we head through the overnight. And I also believe not only that, but uh, the sun will come out tomorrow, mid to late morning, 10, 11 o'clock, the sun will come out. So good news indeed right there. Cynthia and Chris, you guys have another update? Our social media, a lot of people in Highland Village talking about getting bike helmets on, uh, and getting into their bathroom and just hunkering down with a uh, wife, kids and a dog, Pete. Well, that's that's what you need to do. You know, when we we say seek shelter immediately, go to the safe room. That's exactly what you need to do. I, I have people say, hey, Pete, I, I did that. I took the kids. We actually got the bicycle helmets on and, and Jason, you could put the radar back up. But I grabbed the kids and we got into the bathtub yeah. and I tell people a bathtub and if you if you just move here, right? People are like, why would I get into the bathtub? Well, think of what the bathtub is. The bathtub is protection mm -hmm. and that's what you need. People get hurt from flying debris. It flies around wood, two by fours, glass, all that stuff flies around. If, you, if a tornado hits your house or just straight line winds, the bathtub is a protector. You get in the bathtub, maybe you grab some pillows, a bunch of bunch of sheets or something. You get in the bathtub, you cover yourself up. And people that just move here, they might be laughing about this. I know plenty of people that have done it when I've gone out to tornado damaged areas before. And they're like, thank God I did that. It saved my life. I had my little one in my arms, and I'm, I, we're all fine. Mm -hmm. But that's the kind of stuff that happens. And so it, it can be scary. But if you have a plan, if you're smart, right? You know, and that's what we're advocating now. Have that plan. Know where to go, right? Yep. And, and earlier we, we were telling folks, you know, with this hail, we knew there was going to be some, you'd warned us, look, big parts of the area are going to see some, you know, see some hail. And we were telling folks, maybe if you don't have a garage, because you can't assume everybody can just pull into a garage. Their cars are exposed to get some blankets, secure them, put them over the car might save you a lot of money and damage when you wake up tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, you know, a couple of years ago, I can't, you know, it all becomes a blur after a while, but the stuff that happened up in Wiley, the stuff that happened in, in Allen and McKinney, the hail. I mean, remember when it came through people's roofs? Yes. And we talked about this, uh, I think it was on Monday. I mean, these are hundreds of thousands of dollars homes, very expensive, well-built homes. The hail was so bad, it came all the way through the roof. So we want you to be protected. We want you to have that safe plan for yourself and your family. And with what happened last month, all the power outages, imagine having a power outage tonight, right? Uh, the oh. re-trauma of what happened last month. But Encore wants you to follow them on social media. They're saying the best way to report your power outage, and right now they have fewer than 2,000 outages, about mm -hmm. 1,700 in the Fort Worth and Grand Prairie areas. They want you to text out O-U-T to 66267. So text them out to 66267. They are great on social media, getting back to you right away. So if you don't follow them on Twitter, please do. They're sending out a lot of great information right now about those outages. Yeah, and I, I really, you know, I think this is a, a, a great, a great moment for everyone tonight as we've seen the, the first tornado warning of the season, you know, of this spring season here in, in the Metroplex. And man, I tell you what, it could not have looked any more secure for us to have a tornado tonight or any more certain for us to have a tornado tonight than when I saw that hook echo. And that's why that tornado warning was issued. But this is a, this is a heads up that, hey, let's have that plan. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I can't say it enough. Just know where to go with your family during the storm. And know sometimes you, we've all seen these stories where people's homes are damaged. Where do you go after? Because yeah. maybe mom and dad are over here and the kids are over here or grandma or whoever it is. You're in a different area and nobody knows where you are. And there's that 30 minutes of sheer panic. Are they still in the house? Has someone been hurt or worse, right? Find where you're going to go during the storm and where you're going to go after. Let's go over to Jim's house across the street. Let's yeah. meet in the front yard or whatever place that area is, but have a plan. Also having storm safety kit essentials. That's so important, like the flashlight, the battery operated or, or crank radio, the extra batteries on hold um, have 
your first aid kit ready to go just we, in case. We have all that. In a, we have a closet in the interior of our home. We have all of that stuff in there. Jackie always has her, she has a little extra phone charger in there because yep. she has the WFA app because you can watch all of this stuff live like Jesse did, you know, an hour or so ago. I said, get off, get off TV, call your wife. He was concerned. He's got a new little baby girl. Yeah. Call him, make sure everything's okay. And the so, thing about it is you want to have it accessible because you don't want to be absolutely. fumbling around in the dark at yeah. night trying to cobble together all this stuff. So having it close and accessible well, is, is going to be key. Yeah. I, I get teased a lot. You know, I'm captain safety, yeah. but I, I have Jackie and the kids because I'm not at home. And, you know, as the dad, right, Chris, you, you're, yep. you feel like we're the protectors and stuff, but just practice it. We do that, mm -hmm. Jackie and the kids do that. And I'm sitting there like, okay, I'm, you know, you do this, you do this and like, okay. Right. And then it makes them feel better. And then as dads, it makes us feel better. You're the single mom, right? Mm -hmm. You know, women are single dads, practice that stuff, you know, mm -hmm. cause sometimes things can get a little hectic, but I'm telling you the WFAA app truly can be a lifesaver cause you can watch power goes out. You can't watch TV. You can watch our live streaming newscasts on the app. It's free. I'm not plugging it for any other reason other than it's just it's a it's a free deal. I get nothing out of this, but I get some comfort knowing we've helped people. out. So is there the potential for this in this next round overnight? I don't see the supercell potential being as prominent overnight as it just was. Okay. My concern overnight is well, obviously we have the tornado watch in effect. I do have a concern for tornadoes. Uh, I'm really concerned about hail and wind overnight. And I think at a minimum, people are gonna wake up at three, four, five o'clock in the morning and go, what in, what in the world's going on? Because we're gonna have a lot of lightning and a lot of storms as well. So just the lightning and the storms after what we have all gone through, I think that will be a big concern. And right now, they just have moved into Collin County. So let me do this. We have that Collin County warning. I'm a little surprised it didn't go up a little earlier, but there it is. That's the same storm system. So it's Frisco and it is also in Salina and it is in Prosper. That's the hail, that's the quarter to golf ball size hail. So let's do this. I wanna do a quick reset and let everyone know just exactly what's going on. So if you're just joining us right now, this is our continuous severe weather coverage. We have a tornado watch in effect right now for the entire Dallas Fort Worth area and all locations to the south. That goes until four o'clock in the morning. And we had a tornado warning for Denton County. That tornado warning was in effect for probably 30 minutes or so. A very well-defined hook echo, which is just a signature on Doppler radar that shows us 99% of the time that we've had a tornado. Fortunately tonight, uh, we, it, it looks as though we have not, we didn't have anything touched down. It appears as though we haven't had any damage and from all the reports we're getting, we haven't had any, uh, any reports of any injuries. So that could be the best news I think we've had in a long time, right? Uh, but right now we're, we've had lots of reports, lots of pictures of really, really large hail. And that's why we now have a severe thunderstorm warning for Collin County. And, and it's this far east side of Denton County. It's about out of Denton County right now, right on 380 between Frisco and Salina. That's where we have a, a, a pretty large hail core that's probably producing some more golf ball, maybe some tennis ball size hail. That's in Frisco and Salina. Zoom in real fast there, Jason, for me, if you will. And uh, let's check that out. So that's right on the tollway in 380, right where they come together here. Uh, that's where we have a, a pretty decent hail core right now. Here's, the, here's, the to, here's Preston, here's the tollway, or. 289 as we like to call it. I think that's 289, but it's Preston Road. That's that's the toll the tollway right now. So it's Colin and Prosper, Prosper and Parvin. And uh, that's our severe thunderstorm warning. That's the large hail. So let's put a quick track on it. Then we're going to go to Job and Panicker here in, in just a moment. And, and tell me as we're putting the track on here, where is Jobin right now? He's up in Frisco. Joba, we'll check in with you in just a second, buddy. Let's put this track on here as it's moving off to the east northeast at about 30, maybe 35 miles an hour. That puts it in Melissa at uh, almost 11 o'clock. So a little before 11, Verona 1119 and in Blue Ridge at 1122. Jonah, you're just south of where this uh, warning is right now. Uh, Frisco's on the edge of it, at least the northern side of Frisco is. Tell me, uh, well, there it is. That's it, pouring, isn't it, Jonah? Hey Pete, yeah, it is really starting to come down now. It's actually coming in sideways right now. This all transpired in the last 
uh, maybe, what, 20, 30 seconds here, Joseph, right, when it really started getting bad. As we were driving up Dallas North Tollway, it was just sprinkles. Now we see the wind, we see a lot of the rain. I don't know if you can show some of the, uh, Joseph, if you can zoom in on just the gutters coming out of the walls here, that's the, that's the rate at which some of this water is coming through. You know, as we were trying to find a safe place to be, we did find a place just underneath this bank, uh, found an overhang where we can at least somewhat stay dry. Clearly that's not really working. Um, but you know, I can tell you, this had all the makings of this happening. Uh, in the early evening, it was really muggy, it was really hot, and now all of a sudden we, we feel cold air. We see, obviously, uh, sideways rain coming right through us and into our camera lens, I'm sure, and I'm sorry, uh, also through our, uh, onto my face here. Um, but, but that is what's happening here in Frisco. And again, we are at, uh, we're just off of Dallas North Tollway and Stonebrook Parkway, so uh, about midway through uh, the city of Frisco. Thank you very much. Uh, it is really coming down right now in in Frisco. Did you guys hear where he said he was? He, I know he's on the north side. Frisco, tell me real fast. Okay. Is it's, it the yeah, tollway? We're at Dallas North Tollway and Stone D Dallas North Tollway and Stonebrook Parkway. Stonebrook. Okay. It's at the tollway in Stonebrook. I know right where you are. You look like you're in a hurricane right there. Jobin, I know you're going to stay safe. You've done this a couple years, three, four, five or so. So stay safe out there. We'll check back yeah. in with you in a few minutes. Uh, the one thing I'm not seeing there in Jobin's shot, I'm not seeing any hail. There's a, a friend of mine. There's a friend of mine who lives in Prosper. John Hampton is up here. He just texted me. He said, Pete, it is just, I mean, it is just coming down, but we don't have any hail. That is great news. I'm happy for the rain because we're in a moderate to severe drought right now across North Texas. And the fact that it is just coming down with no hail, no tornadoes, no wind. I mean, you saw the wind there where Jobin was, but it's 30, 40 mile per hour wind. I didn't see anything that looked as though it was 58 or plus, which is defined. That's the definition of severe wind, 58 or higher. But we're certainly seeing the, the, the gusty winds from Prosper up to Salina and then down to Frisco where Jobin is. Jobin's in this area right in here. So um, that's where we're seeing the, 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 the very heavy rain right now. So he's north of 121, of course. Let's take a uh, can we go in, Jason, and let's do a little hail analysis. We've had a couple reports that we're not seeing any hail. You see what Doppler radar is showing us right there we go that's it right there so that's good news i mean no no hail to speak of and i like that indeed okay so here's what we're going to do I, are we going to end this newscast at this point we are going to end this newscast. We're going to send you to Jimmy Kimmel right now. Uh, I want you to know we'll be here throughout the night as, as we always are. We'll keep you updated. Uh, we will also be on social, uh, Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash Pete Delkis, WFA Facebook page, and also on at WFAA weather. We'll keep you updated on all that as conditions warrant over the, uh, over the e uh, rest of the evening throughout the overnight. We'll keep you updated on that as well. We'll cut in if necessary. Right now, here's Kimmel.